Want to know how to become invisible forever? Or what the absolute best way to find netherite is? Here are 279 super secret Minecraft things you probably didn't know. Ever wanted to create a nuclear bomb? Well, you're in luck. All you gotta do is place a rail and stack multiple TNT minecarts top of each other. This glitches the game and creates an insane amount of explosive power. Just don't touch it, or you'll probably end an entire race of villager. When thinking of unbreakable Minecraft blocks, bedrock is probably first to come to mind. You can't break bedrock with lava, TNT, or even a literal nuke. So would it surprise you that all it really takes is snow? In 1.17, if you place a cauldron and fill it up with powdered snow, then place a block above it and click the cauldron, it just disappears. Wow, nice job, Mojang. The wither can't swim, making it impossible to spawn them underwater. However, there's a catch. If you swim to the bottom of the ocean and build a little bunker, you can spawn the wither boss at the bottom of the ocean. And when released, it will kind of just stay in the ocean like a weird fish. So hey, if you want an invincible three-headed fish that does nothing, you know what to do. Did you know you can break Minecraft by predicting exactly where lightning strikes land? Well, most lightning strikes are spontaneous. If you load specific chunks at the right time, as discovered by a group called the Prototech server, you can actually predict and direct lightning strikes. This is extremely useful, making it really easy for you to farm OP mobs, such as skeleton horsemen. From there, you can collect all their loot and end up a rich man. You can also just farm your friends, which is another really good option. Feel free to add their dogs to spice things up a little. If you've ever been to a village, you'd know pillagers absolutely hate villagers. I mean, like, Mojang literally coded them to find and murder their babies. But you can actually use this to break Minecraft. As pillagers are programmed to be very dumb, very, if you put a villager in a minecart and have him circle around on a railroad, a pillager will forever go in circles, never able to reach him. <laughs> Imagine bullying villagers. Losers. Wait! Minecraft seeds are randomly generated, meaning you could find entirely different kinds of structures depending on which world you spawn in. Normally, a good seed starts with spawning near a village or you finding yourself close to a desert temple. However, the best kind of seeds are the ones that absolutely defy all types of Minecraft logic. Having weird lava structures like this or a literal glitched ender portal. These seeds completely break and defy every rule of Minecraft. So if you want to break Minecraft, try loading up one of these seeds. That'll give you a good excuse to blow up your friend's base. And their dogs. Don't forget the dogs. <laughs> Hey, what are you doing? It was a Minecraft seed! That doesn't even make any sense! The biggest mistake people make is to mine randomly for the resources they need. You want diamonds? Go to a river! It turns out that if a river has a clay patch, that is a sign there are diamonds below. Start at the center of the clay patch, go two blocks in the Z direction, and mine straight down. You'll be swimming in diamonds! But never mine straight down. If you're not careful, you can break the block below you and fall straight into some lava. So, always mine down with two blocks and have a water bucket so you can and clutch. So many people make this simple mistake. Stop making low ceilings! Even when mining, a two-block tall staircase tunnel is a recipe for bonked heads whenever you go up or down. Also, doesn't the high ceiling look so much nicer in your house? Who doesn't love farming? But a big mistake people make is to stick a single block of water and surround it in veg. That water can only feed so many plants. So instead, set the water and vegetables in rows, and your plants will actually grow faster. Witch huts have the ability to spawn, you know, witches. But also, each time one is generated, a black cat will also spawn inside. They do have a tendency to walk off, but this is actually one of only two ways to find this sleek variant of Kitty. The only other way is wait until a full moon and venture out into a village, where each cat has a 50% chance of spawning as this magical black version. Have you ever run out of gold for powered rails because you never collect it when you're caving? Don't worry, so has literally everybody else that plays this game, but that means there's a solution! Putting a saddled pig in the minecart makes it go much faster on iron rails. It's kind of weird because you have to press the backwards key to move forwards, but it works just fine otherwise. Piglins are primal tribal creatures and do everything together as a group. Most people know they hunt down hoglins together, but you probably didn't know that there's a small chance that they'll dance together after taking one out. In Bedrock Edition, if you name a boat in an anvil, it'll actually show up as a name tag above. Cool, right? I bet Java Edition has an equally cool mechanic. Oh, it doesn't show up.
Uh, just gone oh. completely. Friends can be very trusting, leaving themselves AFK in your world. You could play this pretty unknown trick. Set down a composter and fill it up, leaving just three pixels of space. Then push them in and close the door. They'll actually be trapped and can only escape by breaking the whole thing. If your friend does carpet, a wicked trick is to put magma blocks on the floor and cover it with matching carpet. Watch for your friend to come home and watch as they hop around, confused, as they take damage from their beloved carpet. But sometimes players aren't just trying to steal your loot. They're out for blood. So in a alarm system just won't cut it. To truly fortify your base, try building your base using stairs placed like this. If you fill them with water, it won't spill everywhere. And it makes your entire base completely resistant to TNT, stopping raiders and creepers in their tracks. And if you want to take this to the next level, try placing a line of observers below the outside blocks hooked up to TNT. These will trigger as soon as the stairs are broken, blowing the raiders up instantly while your base sits there totally unharmed. Remember back in the old days of the game when the best traps just involved placing gravel above signs? Well, these go 1,000 times better with scaffolding. Now, instead of spending ages placing signs perfectly, you can just place a layer of scaffolding hooked up to a piston, stick some carpets above it, and as soon as it's triggered, it'll plunge any players and their loot directly into this pit of lava. The most difficult part of creating a secret base is trying to hide the entrance. So try this idea out. Build a regular wheat or potato farm above wherever you want your base to be. Then break a block behind the crop like this and hide a button in there. Not only is this almost impossible to see, but nobody will ever suspect this lovely little farm being the place you hide all your valuable gear. Have you seen this bowl looks pretty normal, but it's actually a super rare item. This drop when a turtle is struck by lightning, a super rare event. What's weirder is that this wasn't a glitch or random choice. Someone at Mojang made sure this happens in the game's code, and I have no idea why. However, there's actually an item Mojang doesn't want you to find. This leather tunic with an efficiency one enchantment should be impossible, but because of a crazy glitch, it can be found in some woodland mansions behind a secret wall. Even crazier, the item there used to be a leather helmet. I wonder what it will turn into next. This large fern is weirder than it looks. And with a rarity rate of 0.3%, this one's pretty rare. You actually can't get these in the wild. She has cut large ferns into two regular ferns, so the only place to find whole ones is in a chest in a tiger village. I wonder what else they're hiding. Frogs! Look at them! All cute and tan. Oh, but I want a rare green frog! To get them green, you actually have to become their dad. Grab a tap bowl in a bucket, take it to a cool biome, and put them in a pool and watch them grow up green. Oh, and don't let the pool freeze over. My babies! Speaking of rare water creatures, Axolotls come in many colors, but one you'll never see in the wild is the legendary blue axolotl. This super rare creature can only be found through breeding and has a 1 in 1,200 chance of spawning, so you better have plenty of tropical fish to feed them. But how about the rarest ore in the game? Deep Slate Emerald Ore is actually very hard to find, with a 0.15% chance to regenerate. It only appears in mountains and windswept hills, and only at depths that both emeralds and Deep Slate appear. Be sure to mine them with a Silk Touch pick so you can show your friends a super rare find. Axolotls are amazing! But can you trust them? A secret message was found in Minecraft's release notes saying, the axolotls are not what they seem. One can only imagine what sinister secrets those adorable axolotls are hiding. Finding a large diamond vein is great. What's even crazier is a maximum diamond vein. It's a whopping 48 diamonds. This only happens when the max diamond vein in a chunk connects to four other chunks at the same time. Unlike regular skeletons, nether skeletons don't have bows. But if they did, the bow would shoot fire. And there's already plenty of that in the nether already. Talking about mobs, there's tons in Minecraft. But did you know this mob was actually changed into an item? That mob is the humble sign. Yes, originally it was classed as a mob, which could only be spawned by pressing B, and only had a pre-written message on it. Don't try to raid a baby strider! As even if you use a command to tame a baby strider and have a saddle on it, the moment you ride it into lava, you'll catch on fire! The baby is just too small to protect you from it. Did you know that Steve wasn't always called Steve? He actually didn't have a name at first, and they had to scramble to come up with one when they agreed to have him show up in the indie game Super Meat Boy. This special secret about iron could save your home, because it turns out an iron chain is the same resistance against explosions as a full iron block despite being made with way less materials. Put them in your walls and you've got a fortress. This secret ender pearl technique lets you phase through walls, and can even get through the roof of the nether. Climb a ladder up to the bedrock ceiling, pearl into the bedrock, and keep going forward! You'll phase through the top! In Minecraft, there's a secret world called Debug World. To find it, you have to press shift and click on the world type button. Press it enough and you'll find Debug World, which is a fast void filled with every single asset in the game. This sneaky little trick lets you copy a structure you've made and paste it wherever you like. Create a grand statue and fill your friend's world with your monstrous art. Ward off hoglins with just a funny little mushroom. These hulking pig beasts are terribly afraid of the warped fungus. No idea why, but at least it keeps them away from my pet strider. This portal makes no sense! It's a portal spawned in only one seed so far, and for some reason the end portal is totally 
totally glitched. It generated with six eyes already in and somehow created a portal that only covers six blocks. If you've ever tried shooting through a door, you know the arrows won't go through the whole of the door, even though there's clearly enough space for an arrow to fit through. But with items like pistons, chains, or a slanted staircase, you'll be able to shoot right through. So yeah, make your doors as chains so you can shoot intruders. This game makes no sense. Make sure you shoot the dogs. Want to be immortal in Minecraft? Well, there's a game-breaking tactic in the game which makes it impossible for you to die. An emo's worst nightmare. To do this, just craft a boat, place it on the ground, and get in and out of it really quickly. It'll trick Minecraft into thinking you're still inside of the boat. From there, you can jump off high buildings, live underwater, and blow yourself up without taking any damage at all. And the best thing is, if you ever get trapped or get lost, you can always just press shift to teleport back into the boat. Now that's pretty cool, depending on your age. And if you like Minecraft, pretty subjective, really. But even cooler than an immortal glitch is a building that will literally morph you into an unkillable soldier. If you're familiar with anarchy servers, you have definitely heard of 2B2T. Anarchy servers have absolutely no rules, meaning you can do anything. Rob banks, grief bases, or kill lots of dogs. But the one thing you cannot do is building a lag machine. But obviously, players decided to break it, building this huge structure which was over 100 blocks tall and looked amazing. However, it didn't go to plan, as instead players near the machine had their hitboxes disappear, making them literally immortal. This machine was mysteriously removed, never to be seen or spoken about again. This is a regular nether portal, and this is a heather nortal. Wait, what? Well, Minecraft has a history of weird nether portals, there's never been anything quite as weird as this one, literally. To do this, you need an update suppressor, which is a structure that allows you to force skip block updates by basically bugging the game out of functioning. And let's be honest, I have no idea how you do this, and you probably don't care either. So after some off-camera building, here it is, a Heather Nortal. Now that's one of life's greatest achievements. When Mojang added XP, they expected you to farm it by killing edible mobs your dogs, and leveling up the normal way. However, what Mojang didn't expect is if you put a ton of mobs all in the same place, they will die of entity cramming. And you can get that sweet, sweet XP. And with Sweeping Edge, you can kill the rest of them with one hit, making it possible to create a self-sustaining mob farm that just feeds you XP. Huh, so that's how McDonald's works. So if you really really want to break Minecraft? I got something for you. If you create a world with the only blocks being ladders, they will defy logic and not let you climb as intended, making you fall indefinitely into the void. This is probably the most useless thing you could ever do. But hey, from a distance, this looks pretty cool. And oh wait, my game crashed. That was worth. I feel very accomplished. Minecraft players all over the world use this incredibly slow method of getting around. People love using bubble columns to zip up to some high tower, but getting down, they use another water shaft. Why waste the time when you can make a shaft, leave it empty, and just have a block of snow or water at the bottom to break your fall? Using shears to collect leaves? Big mistake! You could instead use a hoe, as more modern updates of the game have improved the hoe. And with enchantments like Fortune, you can get way more items way faster. Path blocks, they look great in a lot of spaces, but they're slightly shorter than the average block. If there's any empty space next to a path block, even if another block is on top trying to hide it, the gap will still be there. Look at it, you can see right through that. Piston door lag! It's a big mistake that happens all the time. Pistons pushing blocks out of the way looks all fancy, but takes precious time when you're trying to get through. Put the pressure plate a few blocks back so you don't smash your face on an automatic door or secret entrance. Honey blocks have a crazy feature feature barely anybody knows about. They're actually just a little bit smaller than a normal block, meaning you can shoot arrows between them. Like me later, fortress builders. Dolphins are one of the smartest animals in the world, and it's no different in Minecraft. If you give a dolphin enough fish, it'll actually begin to swim to the nearest underwater chest as thank you for feeding it. Endermen are already one of the most creepy and powerful mobs in the game. They absolutely didn't need another buff to make them even stronger, but they got exactly that. Usually an enderman will just teleport out of the way of an arrow, or other projectile. First, if they've got nowhere to teleport to, the arrow will just bounce off like it's nothing. Cheaters. Luckily, there is a way to make Enderman completely powerless. Yeah, sort of. Sure, you can just place water at your feet, but that's old news. If you accidentally trigger an Enderman by looking into its eyes, don't look away. For some reason, Enderman won't move at all as long as you hold eye contact. And what do you do from here? Uh, good question. Moving on. Breaking blocks like clay underwater is so annoying! Sure, there's the old door trick, but that's no fun compared to TNT. But Mallow, TNT doesn't work underwater! 
What a wrong! All you need to do is place sand or gravel on top before lighting it, and it works perfectly. It barely even damages you. You can actually do the opposite as well. Placing an anvil on top of TNT before lighting it will stop it from breaking any blocks at all. It doesn't even damage the anvil. And again, you take almost no damage from the blast. A real dirty trick only works if your friend puts down signs. Be a little mischievous by moving the signs around and swapping them about. They'll get lost in no time. In a snowy area, try this bouncy castle trick. Build a castle with a spot where you need to drop down. Cover the lower area with slime blocks. Cover that with snow. And when your friend drops down onto it, they'll bounce wildly out of control into whatever hazard you want. This trick is simple and classic. Chests don't open when there's a block above them. So put some obsidian on top and watch your friends slowly chip away just so they can access their tools. This next trick requires your very own pet zombie. Put a name tag on them. Hide them under your friend's bed and watch as a game won't let them sleep because enemies are too close by. Everyone loves a good explosion. So here's a way to make a totally invisible and instant land. Mine. Just place a bunch of TNT minecarts on some powered rails like this and hook them up to a skulk sensor right next to them. Sneak away and you've got the best hidden way to protect your house. Isn't it so great? Ah! My house! But if you want a slightly less destructive method of protection, it's time to hire some soldiers. Bees will actually stay aggravated permanently, meaning if you trap a bunch below the floor in your base and rig them up to release when any intruders enter, they'll swarm them instantly and even chase them down for miles. Let's be honest though, you don't want any anyone in your base at all. So it's time to up the security. With just a couple chains and walls, you can create a cool looking fence. But add some magma blocks covered in moss below and it will actually turn into an electrified laser fence. It works too. If you're standing on the magma, you can't actually break the chain before you die. And if you're super rich, try building this design with iron bars, cobwebs, and magic potion dispensers below the ground. If you rig this tripwire up to shoot damage potions, it'll really send a message to robbers. And it's a cool piece of decoration too. A great way to protect your base from both mobs and players is to hide puffer fish underground around your base. Moss carpets are a super easy way to sneak them into your decoration, and water logging even allows you to hide them in bushes and trees. Ow! Oh god, I'm getting flashbacks! If you're feeling really mean though, the best way to deal with thieves isn't to kill them, but trap them permanently. Using a simple piston trap, you can force a player into a bubble elevator like this, surrounded in obsidian. Due to the bubbles pushing them around, it'll be almost impossible to mine it even with a pickaxe. But if that doesn't impress your friends, Blast some of these rare screaming goat horns. Goats will round players or other mobs. And if they miss and hit a tree, their horns can break off and be used as musical instruments. Horns from screaming goats are extra rare and can't be found any other way. This rare portal is actually a block that you can pick up and drop wherever you want. You need a silk touch and a lot of luck. But if you use this machine to push you as you mine this flower, you could end up mining the actual portal itself. Drop it in the end and you can teleport straight back home, along with anything else that touches the portal. Lightning striking the same place twice is almost impossible. But with some of the rarest items in the game, particularly the trident, you can make this infinite lightning machine where every bounce makes another strike for a crazy light show. Ever try to catch a bubble? This super rare block is actually mined straight out of the water. Using this machine that dispenses water as you mine, pushing the bubbles into the way of your silk touch pickaxe, you can get these bubbles as a block. You can even place them on dry land. This crazy glitch can be used for even more impossible blocks, like this block of water. If you try to mine the underwater plants with your silk touch pickaxe, you can end up with this. It looks like a pain, and when you set it down, it spills out like a bucket of water. Oh god, my head! Just kidding. This rare item is hard to get, but super fun. You need a creeper to get charged by lightning. Then, if they explode and kill other mobs around it, the mobs drop their heads as items. Wear the head, and it will take a lot longer for the mobs to even notice you. The villagers are hiding a secret. They're actually super fast. Don't believe me. Well, it only happens during nightfall when they're under attack. Their top speed is actually faster than a player sprinting. I didn't know you saying Bolt was white. Mojang put a secret that's hiding in plain sight. See? This end crystal actually has a secret message written on it. It's the word Mojang. It's a fact that game updates can reverse soul changes, but in early Minecraft development, this happened a lot. At one point, they stopped leaves disappearing when the trees were cut down, then changed it back to disappear, then stopped it again, and then again changed it to disappear. A cool secret your friends won't know is that while witches can fight each other, they might never win. Their healing potion is more than their damage, so you can put them in a glass box and set them up as a permanent display. In the 1.6 update of Minecraft, they added horses, and it turns Turns out this was brought in from an unofficial fan mod. Mojang saw Dr. Zark's Mo Creatures mod and even copied the horse model itself. Wandering traders look great, but what your friends don't know is that you can breed their llamas and the babies will keep the clothes of the
their parents. It's a weird little detail, but you can make a whole army of fashionable llama. Mojang love making secret references to other games, such as when an evoker sees a blue sheep. The evoker casts a unique spell, makes a weird wololo sound, and turns a sheep red. It's a reference to Age of Empires, where monks would convert enemies to their side, chanting wololo and changing their color. Minecarts can fit almost any mob, including sniffers, ravagers, and even guests. That's a hell of a visitor when you send it down the rails to your friend's home base. Ever feel like a zombie horde is never ending? That's because it might be. Anytime you hit a zombie, it will look around and try 50 times to spawn a new zombie. It only has up to a 10% chance to succeed though. Unless it's a leader! Then it goes up to a 75% chance of spawning the horde. Be careful where you put your beehives. If it's too close to the ocean, any bee that strays over the water can very quickly get disoriented and will eventually fall in and drown. People have lost entire bee colonies this way, so stay safe. There's a crazy looting glitch that lets you get the extra rewards of the looting enchantment even when the tool you're using isn't enchanted. If you have a saw with looting in your main hand, a regular bow in the other, enemies killed with the bow will give extra items. Everyone knows cats always land on their feet, but did you know that in Minecraft they also take no damage from a fall? This is based on cats' real-world ability to survive crazy falls. Some have even fallen out of a plane without a parachute and lived to tell the tale. Go beyond the end of the world with this command. It's a secret teleport destination that will put you on the other side of the world border. But be careful because the moment you pass that border, you'll be taking real damage. On Minecraft Bedrock Edition, you can create a literal piece of art. Using a command block to place hundreds of end crystals, the crystals will actually stack, creating something that doesn't even look like Minecraft. Just make sure you don't run into it. Or walk. Or crawl. Just, just stay away! Over the years of Minecraft, farms have gotten more and more advanced. We went from farming melons to a fully functional wither farm. Using TNT, arrows, and insanely precise timing, these people built a machine able to get arrows to supersonic speeds, allowing you to one-shot the wither and farm its resources while AFK. In fact, there's even a functional wolf farm, which offers a new home to live dogs. Just turn it on and there we go. Hey, what happened to all my dogs? I didn't kill them. I, I, I did not. If you're persistent and dumb enough to cover your whole world with hoppers, your game will become extremely buggy, lagging, glitching, and as a bonus, if you drop a beacon onto one of these, your game will literally die. That is my grandma. Just kidding, she's right here. It's me, the grandma. I'm alive. See you, grandma. That being said, do not put beacons into random hoppers. Not only are beacons valuable, but there's a small chance of your computer exploding. If you want to destroy your world in a stylish way, you can try and place a bunch of iron trap doors, then add skulk sensor blocks below that. From there, just blow it the hell up, or fly above it and drop a single block into it in a super stylish manner before seeing your game slowly die. You're very weird. Shut up, Grandma! Let's set the scene. You hear the music, you're feeling nostalgic. So you go back to 1.9 beta Minecraft to load your old world. Then you realize something is terribly wrong, and it's not just your dating life. The ender portal looks like... Seriously, what the hell is this? This block was the old ender portal frame, and it looked really messed up. Sort of like an ice block mixed with grass. The ender portal looks a lot better now, and boy am I glad they changed it. A major mistake when making an enchantment table is forgetting to bring the right items. Make sure any lapis or books are nearby in chests so you don't have to remember at all. Speaking of storage, what on earth is this? Nothing is sorted, it's all just thrown together any which way. Set aside different chests to hold different things. Want tools? Make a tool chest so you know where all your tools are. In fact, stop using chests entirely. They're old and dumb and stupid. Well, all right, they look okay. But barrels carry the same amount, cost less to make, and can actually be opened even when another block is on top of it. Don't panic! Really, don't panic when a creeper is coming or TNT is ready to explode. Just put some blocks down in front of you and you'll take way less damage. And in case you don't have a big enough iron supply to waste on literally blowing up, there's a cheaper alternative in placing TNT on top of a half slab instead. For some reason, this also reduces the blast radius significantly. But unfortunately, you still take quite a lot of damage. Are you one of those weirdos that prefers using donkeys over horses for the extra storage space? First of all, why are you using horses in the first place? It's 2023, man, get a Lytra! But secondly, llamas are a way better option. They can have up to 15 inventory slots and form groups of 10 that follow each other around. Using shulker boxes, you can transport up to 4,000 stacks of blocks with you. That's this many blocks, more than you'd ever need. And if you need another reason to make the switch to llamas, check this out. While horses and donkeys just sink like rocks when you try to ride them in water, llamas can swim. You still can't control them or anything, but if you 
need a fancy pool float or something, llamas work perfectly. Fireworks can be used for a bunch of things these days, but I bet you never thought of making a cannon with them. That's right, fireworks launched from dispensers actually do damage to mobs, meaning firework crossbows are out, and this is the new best way to take out mobs. Although it doesn't look it, villagers can actually wear armor. They can even wear mob heads and pumpkins, but nobody wants to see that. You can use dispensers to equip it to them, and even put enchantments on each piece of armor, including Thorn's enchantment. God, that's an embarrassing death message. Oh, and by the way, that mob head thing works on piglins too, and it's somehow even worse! Everyone knows how cowardly villagers are, especially around anything that even has a possibility of hurting them. But I bet you never noticed they actually sweat during raids. At least, I heard that sweat. They really don't have much to worry about though, because some of these villagers actually have morals? These scary ex guys called Vindicators refuse to kill baby villagers, so at least when they grow up, they can rebuild the village. <laughs> Uh, never mind. I like to call this trick the drip leaf drop. A big drip leaf creates a platform that can hold you up, but it folds soon after. Grow one above a big pit and lead your friend over it. You'll trigger the fold and they'll fall right in. Hey! If your friend is online and you can access a house, they a really weird trick by building an upside down version of their house on top of their regular house. It's a bizarre mind bending monument that will take time to remove if they even want to. If your friend is a pet dog, a real sadistic trick is to replace it with your own. Hide their dog and name your own dog the same same name. Then watch as your friend struggles, wondering why it won't listen to them anymore. You can even hit your friend and watch as they run screaming from the dog they thought was their best friend. Now think about it, if you can remove all the mobs in your world, there's no need to protect your base. So how on earth do you do that? Well, as usual, the mango has a solution. If you create this super simple warden farm, you can use note blocks to lure dozens of wardens into this prison with a vine inside. Eventually, so many wardens will spawn that it prevents any mob from spawning anywhere in the entire world. However, this is terrifying and there's a much easier easier way to get basically the same effect. Simply grab a boat and spend some time looking for a mushroom island. Other than the deep dark which has other problems, this is the only place mobs won't spawn naturally. And it's the perfect backdrop to build an awesome fantasy base. They can be quite hard to find, but you can always use a seed map if you're feeling devious. An even deeper secret comes from the creeper head. Use a creeper head in a firework recipe, an explosion will take the shape of a giant creeper's face. But some secrets are so deep we have to go back in time to get them. Stoey grass was patched out long ago, but if you make a well in the 1.16 version of Minecraft, get an Enderman in the Nether to pick up a snow-covered grass block and put it down, then take the map from the game files into a new world in the current version of Minecraft, that block will still be there. Don't mind it though, or it'll be gone forever. In the Woodland Mansion, there is an item you were never meant to see in survival. In Bedrock Edition Beta 1.16.0.57, a secret lava room in the Woodland Mansion would normally hide the diamond block, but this version would glitch out, showing the secret barrier block instead. So many rare finds are in old updates, including the most powerful of all. Load Minecraft Snapshot 22W13 one block at a time and you will find an insane change. The Endermen spawn with random items in their hands, including the rarest of them all, a command block in a minecart. This only spawns 0.0001% of the time, and for good reason. If you can get the rare command block out and use it, you can use them to get Endermen to drop the end gateway block that is normally impossible to get in survival. Use this code in the command block, and Endermen will now have the chance to drop this endgame item Mojang never wanted you to have. A fish out of water bounces and flops, but you can actually get them jumping way higher. On a slime block, they'll gain height, sometimes up to 17 blocks high. The world famous creeper is the face of Minecraft, but they actually have a secret past. They weren't designed. They were an accident! Like my birth. The developers were trying to make pigs, but instead of making them long, they made them extra tall. This created the frightening creature we know today. Did you know that spiders never touch the ground? That's because of how the model is made. Even though it's on the floor, the legs never actually reach the block below it. A secret dirty little trick you can do is build an end portal above your friend's bed. So when they respawn, they'll instantly teleport to the end and will have to live there until the bed or the portal is broken. This milk is special. It was milked from a squid. That's because back in beta 1.2, squid could be milked just like cows. It was later taken out of the game. But modders all over the world have been desperately trying to put it back into the game. This mound of snow holds a secret. It's actually an igloo, and exactly 50% of the time, there's a secret trap door underneath, leading to a golden apple, a zombie villager, and a regular villager. If you cure the zombie villager, you've got yourself the makings of a brand new village. Invisibility is amazing, but it's not perfect. Wearing armor makes you more visible, but even without nothing on at all. Bats and cats can see you clear as day. So if you see 
some bats freaking out about nothing, there might be another player sneaking up on you. It's super gross, but this baby panda can make a slime ball. All you have to do is wait for it to sneeze, and the gooey snot has a chance of coming out as a full slime ball ready to be used. Hey, you ever wanted infinite TNT? If so, here's the solution. If you build the following contraption, you'll be able to duplicate TNT forever! Something about the coral reef glitches the TNT, allowing for a devastating bug. This is something commonly used in Minecraft Warfare, creating flying machines with infinite TNT to nuke your enemy's base. So if you want to break Minecraft with a bang, try this out sometime. Everyone knows you can't place water in the nether. Or can you? If you build a time machine and travel all the way back to Minecraft version 1.6, you'll need to stock up on ice blocks. Why? Well, my friend, in this version, if you break ice in the nether, you get water, allowing you to technically turn the nether into a water park. My life is finally complete. And I've got a cool time machine to boot, so that's pretty cool, yeah? <laughs> I think it's cool, yeah. Okay, so villagers aren't the smartest mobs, but did you know they're immortal? Just kidding, did you really believe that? But they kind of are, because if you make a glass container and have a villager go in for a little nap, you can surround him all with lava and watch him die! <laughs> Wait, how the f*** did he survive? Really, Mojang? I'm trying to have fun here and be an evil man. Guests are annoying. Let's be honest, they're ugly, hurt your eyes, they suck. That is until you use them to turn them into a gassed turret. Yes, you heard that right. You can trap gas and turn them into your own turret machine. By clicking fast, you're able to direct the fireballs to wherever you want, making it the perfect defense for infinite TNT flying machines. And also just destroying your friend's house and their dogs and their dog's dogs. Trust me, bro, it wasn't me. My grandma can vouch. I hate you. See, it's so much fun finding buried treasure, but where is it? I'm at the X. Everyone makes a mistake of just guessing the X exactly is pointing, but you might be off by a few blocks. So to be absolutely sure, look at the coordinates in the chunk selection. The treasure will always spawn at 9-9 for that chunk. It should be straight down. The nether is where mistakes can be deadly. It's very easy to catch fire, and water disappears instantly. Or does it? The big mistake people make is not bringing a cauldron and buckets of water. Even in the nether, water in a cauldron will not disappear. So when you catch fire, put yourself out with this cool trick. A big mistake is to not keep up with what's changed in game updates. In version 1.18, they even changed the way diamonds spawn. It used to be that diamonds mostly showed up between depths 5 to 12, but now you'll find them showing up more and more all the way down to bedrock. A mistake that has taken millions of lives is digging under sand and having it fall on your head. The best way to avoid dying is to put a torch under any falling blocks. Any sand or gravel that falls on the torch breaks instantly. You can get floating Minecraft tracks by placing them on trap doors and flipping them down. Aside from this just looking really weird, you can make some pretty crazy traps with this, as all the rails disappear at once when anything updates them. While testing this, I realize you can actually walk underneath trap doors even though you're way taller than this gap. And your head even sticks into the trap door. Yo, Mallow, is that a fresh cut? No, 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 no please! Shulkers are one of the most mysterious mobs in Minecraft. I can't even figure out what they're supposed to be. But it turns out if you throw an invisibility potion at one, all is revealed. The shulker's shell disappears, leaving the shulker itself floating in midair. I'm still no closer to understanding what on earth this thing is, but I guess he's like cute. It's common knowledge now that villagers are the best way to farm items, but it takes so long to kill them. But it turns out if you place iron bars near the zombie villager, you can actually speed it up a bunch. The wiki says this works with beds too, but when I tested this, it seemed like it was fake. But let me know in the comments if it works for you. Speaking of beds, did you know that there used to be a sky dimension planned for Minecraft? It was supposed to be a magical realm in the sky that you could access through dreams. Each time you went to sleep, there would be a chance you'd wake up here instead. Unfortunately, this idea was eventually replaced by the end, but I'd love to see them bring back this idea. While well, you were busy having sniper duels or hiding away, praying they wouldn't see you, skeletons have been hiding a dark secret. Okay, it's not that dark, but around 11% of them are actually left-handed and hold their bows differently to the rest. Apparently, this is to mirror the amount of real people who are left-handed. Also, even though wither skeletons can't spawn naturally with a bow, they still have a line of code that lets them shoot fire arrows when they're given one with commands. Weird, right? Have you ever noticed that the sky actually changes color during the weather fight? That's right, as soon as the fight begins, the horizon turns a deep, ashy gray, and some clouds become much darker. Too bad nobody will ever see this because we all fight the wither underground now. Like mole people. If your friend wants a nice oxidized copper roof, trick them by secretly waxing the copper blocks with honeycomb. They'll be waiting for days wondering why it's not turning that lovely shade of green. Check out this infinite lightning rod. If you can trap your friend in a room above one, see how long they can survive as lightning constantly strikes around them. Bring extra difficulty 
difficulty by dropping hostile mobs in with them. This deadly trick is devilishly simple. If your friend uses water to jump great distances, put a blue tin to block over the water. It totally blends in, and you can watch as your friend slams into it at full speed. Unfortunately, snowmen don't do damage to mobs with their attacks, but they will push them back and get their attention. If you spread a bunch of them out in tall towers around your base, they'll totally stop any mobs from attacking you and keep you safe. And if it's players you're worried about, try swapping a snowman out for a skeleton and adding fire around it to create a truly spicy surprise for any intruders. I think the most underrated item in 1.20 is the calibrated skulk sensor. When you place an amethyst block next to it, it'll relay any signal it gets to any other nearby sensors. Using this, you can create essentially infinite wireless redstone that's only activated by certain noises in certain places. So if I eat this piece of food here, the sensors will relay the signal along and teleport me using this enderpearl status machine. This will make your base literally impossible to find. You should know that if you're playing on hard mode, a door probably isn't enough to keep you safe from zombies. So instead, try placing two end rods like this as a door instead. You can slide through perfectly, but mobs have a really hard time. And if end rods aren't your style, this works with bamboo, different kinds of fences, and even lightning rods. But I'll be careful using these in bad weather. Ah! These do have a slight drawback though, as if you manage to anger enough mobs, it can push each other through. So for an entrance that's almost foolproof, add a line of cobblestone walls with some carpets on top. Not even spiders can get past. But what if you're just lucky? If you're walking through the game and find this adorable little lamb, you might be the luckiest gamer alive. This pink lamb can naturally spawn, but it's so rare, most players never see it. There's only a 0.0082% chance of spawning. You could fake that with die, but one secret mob you can't fake is a rare and exclusive brown panda. You have to find this super rare panda the hard way. One item Mojang never even intended to make is the fabled triple chest. It has only been recorded once in the entire history of Minecraft, in an old version of the game. In the abandoned mine, back when mine chests didn't spawn in minecarts, they could spawn next to a monster spawner's chest, making a fully functional triple chest. The high level secret that many players don't know exists is a conduit. This special beacon style item creates an underwater zone where you can never drown, or hurting any naturally hostile underwater mobs nearby. It's so hard to get though that it needs a heart of the sea. Nautilus shells, and plenty of prismarine just to function at all. The blue axolotl is the rarest version of that mob in Minecraft, but the announcement for Caves and Cliffs Part 1 shows off the green axolotl. This was an early version of the axolotl that never made it into the release game, making it even rarer than the blue one. The heart of the sea is this blue orb, but it holds a secret. When fully activated as a conduit, the heart opens, showing a staring orange eye. This ancient fact is from even before Minecraft was made. It turns out the original apple sprite in Minecraft is from a previous game made by Notch, called Legend of the Chambered. Don't be so hasty with enchantments. Some have hidden properties, like Quick Charge. At level 6 and above, crossbows with this enchantment stops the reload animation at the first frame, which is before the crossbow is loaded, and so won't load at all. Here's a trick that will freak your friends out. Carpet can actually be placed on any non-air block, even lava. It's tricky and dangerous, but you can walk on lava like it's nothing. It's easiest with moss carpet, as that doesn't burn. This mushroom is a light source. It may not look it, but the brown mushroom is generating the lowest light in the game, light level 1. Before for glow berries, there might have been the only food that could glow. In fact, this is actually based on real mushrooms that glow in the dark. In the Java edition, you can use rail tracks to block mobs completely. Certain enemies like zombies and piglins will not cross the rails, unless they're a phantom and fly over it. Check out this sick grappling hook made entirely in-game. You just use a bunch of command blocks. It checks that you launch the fishing bobber, drags you toward it, removes the bobber when you reach it, and even stops you when you hit a wall for a perfect grappling hook experience. There was actually a secret red dragon that almost made it into the game. The plans were dropped in 2014, but Mojang has said that if they ever brought it back, it would come from the rarest item in the game, the dragon egg. This lava is trapped! The pressure plate technically fills that space with stone, so the lava can't flow into it. Use it as a decoration in your house? It's totally safe, until someone decides to break it. This secret is one you've seen and never even noticed. The title screen Minecraft has a 10,000 to 1 chance of changing the spelling to Mincraft. Circles are illegal in Minecraft, but with command blocks, you can make one with a an armor stand that rotates. This spawn stands as it rotates, with sand blocks on their head. Use a command to face the center stand and make the stands invisible for a perfect circle. You should hide at night to protect yourself from monsters, right? Well, not if you're on the rare mushrooms biome. It would be a mistake to waste those nighttime hours, because hostile mobs just don't spawn on mushroom biomes, unless there's a monster spawner. One mistake is not getting a cat. It turns out creepers hate cats and will run if there are too many around your home. Plus, look how cute they are. Aww. Stop using powered rails. They're expensive and unnecessary. If you really want that speed boost, saddle up a pig and put it in the rail cart. No, I'm serious. Riding the pig in the minecart while pushing forward lets you move almost as fast on normal rails as you would on powered ones. Using a furnace for your food is a big mistake. Use a campfire. It doesn't need any fuel.
fuel. And even if the fire gets put out, you can use a silt touch shovel to recover it, and the fire will be lit again. This boat is actually a trick. When you get in, it explodes into as many boats as you want. To make it, just pour a ton of boats into a hopper that drops into a dispenser on repeat. It will place boat after boat after boat into the same spot on the water. Then you should break the machine apart and watch the chaos from afar as your friend tries to get in. A dirty trick to swipe their goods is to hide a hopper underneath their furnace. Their new smelted ingots fall right into your evil clutches. Keep those stolen goods out of sight by hiding them in chests. These actually have a limit on how far they can be before the game stops showing them. So if you put them all the way to the top of the sky above the clouds, your friend will never find what you took. So let's be honest though, one of the best ways to protect your base is to just hide it really well. So next time you're feeling too lazy to set up tons of traps on your turf, try heading to a snowy biome and hiding it like this. Pick a random snow-covered block and place a few scaffolding below it. Then dig two holes either side, add a bubble elevator in one, and now you have an invisible base that you can even crouch around in to hide your name tag. That's if you can remember where you put it, which, let's be honest, I can't. Mobs have got way better at pathfinding compared to how they used to be, but they still have some issues. For some reason, they still don't see carpets as blocks. So if you fill a pit like this with them, you're totally protected from mobs. Two tall flowers like sunflowers and roses work for this too. If you're like me and can never remember where you put your secret entrances, try this out. Shulker boxes are a great way to sort your items. But if I jump on top of this one and open it, suddenly I'm in my second secret base. For some reason, you can fall through shulker boxes if there's a block above your head, allowing for a perfect entrance that you can even color code and use as storage. Everyone knows zombies love turtle eggs. Or hate them, I guess. But you can actually use this to protect your base. With just a single turtle egg and a trap door, you can create this super simple zombie trap that will kill every zombie nearby for you for almost no cost. Some items have only existed in a single update, including mad experiments like this special little chicken that actually lays diamonds instead of eggs. They don't taste good in an omelet though, and the chickens have a bad habit of exploding. One item you were never supposed to get is bedrock. But if you put end crystals around the end portal after killing a dragon, and then quickly explode them with a click before the dragon resummons, there's a slight chance a piece of that bedrock will fall through the portal and end up as a usable block at world spawn. Check out this nether portal, or a uh, peathered nautil? This reverse nether portal requires this insane contraption of update suppressor rails that lets you destroy pieces of the frame without this area of the portal breaking. Use water to break the inner section and you can fill that with obsidian. Then break the rest of the frame and you get this mind-bending result. Hey, that's illegal! This impossible end portal doesn't have a frame. To get this, build a portal, hide a mushroom one block to the side and three blocks below. Bone meal it and the mushroom will grow and delete the frame. Do this on all sides and the portal will exist on its own. Just make sure you don't accidentally walk in. Uh, I, I, good dragon. Now this definitely should be impossible. This rare style of lava block is actually a weird glitch. Where if you trap some lava, use a redstone block, piston, and slime to break the walls without letting the lava out, destroy the redstone, the piston, then the rest, you end up with a lava block that floats in midair. You'll need a lot of luck for a bunch of these rare items, so better get a rabbit's foot to help just in case. But they're rare too! They drop only a fraction of the time when hunting these cute little bunnies. Sorry fellas, it's for the content. DIE! This rare item is a lot more dangerous. Get a bottle and scoop up the dragon's breath in the middle of a fight with the ender dragon. The light of a beacon looks great from close or far. A cool secret aspect is how it reacts to stained glass. Each glass put in the way of the beam changes the color, making millions of possible shades. Here's a fact you might not know. The illusioner can't handle boats. They get so confused that when shooting their bows, the arrows go backwards. In the original trailer for Minecraft, way back in 2011, this mysterious other variant of Steve was present. He's not available as a choice in the launcher, so this is the only example of him that exists. The end wasn't always where it is now. During early developments, the end was supposed to be a sky dimension. Secretly, they saw the sky dimension as heaven, and the nether as hell. This spooky fact runs a chill down my spine, because if you play the music discs 5, 11, and 13, after 5, 11, and 13 seconds, they combine to play the sound of a survivor's terrifying story. This cool trick lets you explode TNT underwater. If you put a sand block on top and then ignite the TNT, the block will fall into it, making sure the water doesn't stop the explosion. The fastest way to get home is with an ender pearl stasis chamber. It's a fun technique where a pearl is kept hovering in a bubble elevator. If you connect it to a daylight sensor, when night comes, the bubble stream stops, and the pearl lands, teleporting you back home. This is a miracle. End portal frames have a 10% chance of spawning already filled with an eye. Having all of them filled only happens one in a trillion times. Did you know about Minecraft's secret F commands? Everyone knows about pressing F for all that info. But did you know about F3 plus B that shows everyone's hitboxes? What happens if I press F3 plus C? Ah! Behold, the mighty villager on his chicken steed. To get this secret villager, you have to find a baby villager riding a chicken. If you cure that baby, it will eventually grow up and become an adult villager on a chicken that works just like a normal villager. But you can attach a lead or lure them around with seeds. Most shulkers are easy to spot, but if you use the summon command, the shulker will be dyed a different color. They now look just like a
like a died shulk a box instead. You could replace your friend's box with one to freak them out when they try to get their stuff. This zombie is completely brain dead. That's because in this 1.9 snapshot, zombies spawn with the no AI tag set to one, meaning nothing was going on inside their heads. Weird stuff started happening too, like sometimes I would float off in the air. It's so easy to get lost in Minecraft. It even happens to me sometimes. But if you make a banner, name it using the anvil, then use the map on it, it'll show up on your map. Plain as day. Now I just have to find my anvil to get started. Hmm, why did I put that? Want to loot a desert temple? Do not forget your water bucket! It's really useful if you accidentally step on that central pressure plate. Dig through it to expose the TNT, then pour that water on top. The first TNT will explode, but won't damage anything, or ignite the other TNT. This trident with Riptide is great for the high jump, but a big mistake people make is using it in deep water. You actually do much higher jumps in a one-block deep puddle. The sniper duel achievement can be really hard to get normally, but this is Minecraft! Get creative! Trap a skeleton in a hole, put a block above its head, shoot the block with arrows, put a sticky piston there, connect a switch 50 blocks away, pull the switch, the block moves, the skeleton dies, and you get your shiny new achievement. Try this spooky trick with your good friend Johnny. Name tag a vindicator with that name, and they go nuts, killing everything they see. Turn them invisible and set them loose in the neighborhood. First your friends will see animals dying, then suddenly they'll start getting hit as Johnny turns on them! Hide behind a tree and play a goat horn to add scary sound effects. If your friend is showing off their riches with shiny gold blocks, Play this funny trick by replacing them with yellow concrete blocks. See how long it takes for them to notice. Use an anvil to change their name, and you can replace the blocks they hide in their chest too. Decoys are the number one best way to help hide your base, and you can even cover them with traps. Try building this water drop chute somewhere obvious. Let's add a trip wire halfway down. As soon as it triggers, this piston pushes a block over, leaving the thief in a very unfortunate situation. Another way to create a great decoy is with paintings. If you cover a wall with all sorts of paintings, an intruder is always going to try and just walk on through. However, if you build this set up, you can totally trick them. That's a real entrance requires throwing an item in here and being squished through this trap door. It's quite sophisticated, just like my art collection. Mm, yes. Mm. All these methods are quite expensive, though. If you want the cheapest possible way to protect your base, try literally just placing boats all the way around it. When it turns nighttime, any mobs that try to attack will get stuck in them and serve as a defense against players. Another super cheap method of defense is to just wire up a super annoying noise to start playing as soon as someone enters. When this door is opened, an observer gets pushed over here and triggers all these blocks over and over, creating a circuit that will drive a thief crazy and even work as a perfect alarm system. This villager is so rare, they literally can't spawn on their own. There are no swamp or jungle villagers normally, so you have to get one zombified, stick him in a boat, take him away to the swamp or jungle and cure him there. Ta-da! The new look is very snazzy. An enderman that's immune to water? Endermen hate water, but if an enderman spawns in a cauldron full of water, they're absolutely fine. Let's hope they don't learn this trick, as they're already a major problem. Deep in the ancient cities is a rare and super useful Swiss sneak enchantment. It is only a available in loot chests in ancient cities and can speed up your sneaking speed. Get lucky enough to find a level 3 book and you're going the same speed as your regular walking. I am speed! This is so rare it only exists in one update and you can take it with you outside the game. In the 20W14 Infinite Snapshot, there is a secret folder in the game files called Nothing to See Here Move Along. Inside are two sounds, banana.ogg and bananana.ogg. There are two versions of this sound, which is a tribute to the Sega logo. Have you ever found a music disc in a chest? Do you want to find them all. They're actually a very rare item. Most can be dropped by a creeper that was killed by a skeleton, but three of them can only be found in ancient cities, dungeons, or mansions, and one of them can be made by gathering nine disc fragments. Get the whole collection and play that music loud! Speaking of ancient cities filled with rare loot, Minecraft 1.20 added these new buildings in the deep dark biome way underground. They're filled with new threats and new treasures, like the silence armor trim. This armor trim only appears in chests, and only 1.2% of the time. Hope you get lucky. Use this crazy secret to spook your friends. There is no limit to the amount of bats that can hang from one block. For other animals, the game stops this from happening, but you can pack the bats in as much as you want. Stick them in the walls and watch your friends unleash them all by accident. Creatures from the nether hate the water, except for the magma cubes. They can swim just fine in it without getting hurt. Worried about invisible players? Well, this little fact might save you, because enchanting tables will react to you even if you're invisible. Llamas are amazing, and even more so when they hit the water. Unlike pigs or horses, llama actually floats on top of the water like a boat when you 
destroy them. Pillagers are a team, and even the Ravagers share traits with them. As the first and third Ravager hurt sounds are actually the Pillager hurt sound. Pitch to sound much lower. Ride any creature you want. The ride commands lets you or anything you want ride on top of any other creature, such as this bee. So I can fly without even needing Elytra. Get a whole squad of bees and play fly to the bumblebees as you descend upon your enemies. Ever wanted to feel what it's like to be a shulker? Crawl down into a one block space with a shulker block underneath you. When you open the box, then close it again, you'll end up inside the box. Ah, let me out! This killer rabbit is extinct. Back drawing version 1.8, there was a very rare chance that the killer bunny would spawn and attack the player. You could still breed the bunny and create more killers too. The model even had blood on its mouth in some versions. This secret trick to survive anything without any items. There's a million ways to avoid damage using special blocks, armor, or potions. But if you have nothing, exit the game just before you take damage. In LAN or single player games, when you load back in, the damage is ignored. Duplicate M portals endlessly with this trick. You need to make a world in 1.19 Java Edition and then update it to 1.20. If you place an end block tower on the exit portal, once you kill the dragon or place an ender crystal, a duplicate end portal will be spawned. Back in 1.14, you can apply multiple different protections on the same armor piece. Stack all sorts of protections to create the ultimate armor and then update your game so you can have an illegally strong outfit. This weird villager secret can give infinite emeralds. When you cure a zombie villager, any trade you do with them will have a discount. If you cure them multiple times, it will keep going down. And you can end up with weird prices, like getting three books for two emeralds, which you can sell back three books for three emeralds, getting you a one emerald profit. Getting caught in a raid can be a nightmare, but don't make the mistake of fighting off the enemies in open combat. Just dig down! In a three block hole, you can hit the Ravager, but it can't hit back. Want to sneak first? Use swift sneak correctly. If you sprint, jump, then sneak as you land, your swift sneak movement will actually be going one block faster every second than you would sneaking normally. If you find yourself in a cold biome and want to make a farm, you can! But don't make the mistake of using open blocks of water. Use waterlogged leaves instead, because these don't freeze like water does. Ladders take a lot of wood to make, and when you're exploring, you might make the mistake of wasting wood for no reason. Instead, grab a friend, get some shields, and start punching each other. The knockback can launch you six blocks into the air with some real speed. Try this pit trap as a dirty trick to play. Dig a huge hole, put up a bunch of scaffolding to cover the top, cover that with snow, and put a little treat in the center. Hide at the bottom and wait for them to take the bait. Then hit the scaffold and watch them tumble down to their death. Here's a trick they might not notice at first, but will hate when they notice. Dig out the blocks under your friend's house, then put path blocks all around it. Path blocks are slightly smaller, so the gap will show the empty underside of their house, but only if you're looking carefully. Once they notice, they'll see it everywhere. This will also help with this truly terrible trick. This gap under the house will fill up with monsters as they spawn in the dark. When your friend least expects it, will hear the growl of a zombie dangerously close and would have no idea where it's coming from. Minecart rails also have the same effect, and you can make cool patterns out of them, but they have a second effect I think is even more interesting. For some reason, mobs see rails as completely impassable objects and won't ever walk over them. So if you surround your base with a railway, it'll be completely safe from the horrors of the outside world, and you get a fun little roller coaster too. Even though zombies can knock down doors with these, for some reason they're completely stopped by trap doors. And given we can easily hop on all fours and crawl beneath, this simple setup works perfectly as a door that zombies have absolutely no hope of breaking down. Eating a chorus fruit will teleport you to a random nearby block, even if that block is maybe on the other side of a wall. So if you head underground and build a tunnel like this, making sure to place carpets on the ground, you can build a base on the other side of the wall that can be instantly entered by simply eating a chorus fruit. However, I think the best possible secret entrance is one that I've never seen anybody use. Simply dying can teleport you tens of thousands of blocks away depending on where you set your spawn. So you can make an underground obsidian bunker far away from anything else, store your items in an ender chest, and instantly teleport there. Then you can build a machine like this to obstruct your spawn point for 60 seconds and instantly respawn at 0, zero again. But the most powerful defense method of all that allows you to be completely and utterly safe from all mobs in the game is to just simply put it to peaceful mode. Absolutely nothing could... Huh? What's that? Oh no, it can't be. Ah! Oh god, subscribe! This secret TNT technique can save your life. If you place TNT on a slab, explosion damages much, much fewer blocks around it, making it much less scary to handle. You could even have TNT decorate your home, if you're brave. Fishing yanks fish out of the water at speed, but it's actually not an automatic animation. The fish are actually flying through the air, and if you step aside, they'll zip right past you. Use this secret to launch fish at your friends, slapping them in the face at high speed. Speaking of speed, 
normal slimes are slow, but this slime will catch you. Slime speed is based on slime size, so size 8 and above goes faster than even a player sprinting. Want a chair you can actually sit in? Try this secret technique by guiding a llama to your house, disguising it as a chair, and turning the llama invisible. All that will be left will be the carpet, which looks great as a cushion. Here's a fun fact that also happens in real life! In the game, axolotls will not follow you unless you have a live fish in a bucket. If the fish is just dead in your hand, they won't care. This is because real axolotls only eat live fish, and the developers wanted to show that in the game. Squid can survive out of water for about 15 seconds before it runs out of oxygen. But there's a secret fact here. The fact that the squid is a special change to its animation, slowing down as the oxygen runs out. Did your friends store their enchantment books in ordered chests? Play a trick by replacing some of their high-level books with level 1 books. They all look the same, so they might not even notice until it's already too late. No matter how many chickens your friend clears away, more keep coming with this next trick. Stuff a bunch of chickens above a hopper. The eggs go into a dispenser with a repeater causing it to shoot the eggs out, spawning a bunch more chickens in the process. Hide this contraption in a tree near your friend's house and he'll be drowning in chicks. Wanna trap your AFK friend in a little box? It's the first trick anyone tries, but if you waterlog the blocks, it becomes so much harder to break. And when they do, your friend will be drowning in water. Speaking of enchantment, it's a mistake not to get the mending enchantment first. If you get other enchantments first and leave mending too late, you could break that item accidentally or get that too expensive message, stopping you from enchanting it at all. Nether gold can be really useful in getting gold for the piglins, but it's a mistake to mine it normally because all you get are nuggets. Use a silk touch pickaxe and smelt the ore in a furnace, and you'll get a whole ingot instead, which you can trade to the piglins directly. Burning a lot of coal in your furnace? Don't just put a big stack of coal in the furnace. Combine 9 coal into a block and use that in the furnace. It actually burns longer than 9 coal on their own. Don't get lost in your new mine. The best way to keep track of where you've been, where you're going, and what you're going to do next is to put down signs. Seems simple, but so many people make the mistake of exploring without leaving a trail of signs telling you how to get home. It can also make a great to-do list. Sneak up on your friends while sprinting full speed with this trick. If you move to the absolute edge of a block so that the middle of your screen is above the next block over, the game will behave like you're on that block. If the block is empty, then when sprinting, you'll cause no noise or particles. There's a secret tech to throwing splash potions that make them last longer. The game tracks how much time the potion was flying through the air and extends how long the potion effects last. So don't just throw a potion on the ground, throw it into the air to get the most out of it. This house is on fire! But these slabs are completely unharmed. That's because they're made with the new petrified oak slabs. They look like oak, but petrified means they are like stone. They don't catch fire, you mine them with a the pickaxe. And to make drum beats when put on a note block. This secret block is the most complicated block of them all. The jigsaw block is what the game uses to generate villages and structures throughout the game. You can only get the block through a command, because the blocks delete themselves after it's done its job. This secret item was disabled from the game. The bundle was a bag you could carry and fill with any other items up to the stack limit. If you had emeralds, diamonds, and netherite, you could fit them all into one space. And when you right-click, it launches all the goodies out onto the ground like a bag of candy thrown at your friends. Your friend keeps cutting down your favorite tree? Get revenge with this new trick. Hide anvils in the trunk among the leaves. If someone cuts through enough of the tree, the anvil will fall right on top of them. This silky little trick is great if your friend has a fear of spiders. Fill their house with cobwebs, making them slowly trudge through their own home. Then put a single spider in their bedroom to attack. When they complain, just blame the spider. Lava doesn't burn scaffolding, so try this trick on a friend trying to break your stuff. Put scaffolding in your house that looks like you use it as a ladder. At the top, put some lava and hide it from view. If your friend wants to be mean and break your scaffold, they'll be greeted with a face full of lava. This next evil trick is quick and easy. Wait at the top of a bubble stream shaft. Shoot a bunch of arrows of harming into the top. And when your friend gets to the top, they'll get hit and maybe even die. This naughty little trick is also really simple. If your friend boasts about their log cabin, go around their house, stripping a block here and there at random. It will look dreadful. Setting the survival mode to peaceful difficulty will not save you. The fact is, there's one mob that can still attack you in peaceful mode, and that's the llama and its angry spit attack. So don't get on their bad side. You can fly with a rocket and elytra, but the fact is, the best way to fly is to shoot yourself with a slow fall arrow. If you do that, then launch off with a riptide trident, you'll reach the top of the well before the slow fall runs out. Then at this insane height, launch your elytra and fly for miles. Maybe foxes can't swim, or at least they can for a little bit, but the fact is, they're so small that they can't keep their head above water to breathe. Did you know you can create your own skulk biome with a secret technique? The skulk block reacts and spreads when mobs die nearby, so you could make a mob spawner lead onto a skulk catalyst. With every death, the skulk biome will spread with no limit! One fun fact is that you used to be able to feed parrots cookies to tame them. But this got changed and now the cookies will kill the parrot. The reason for this deadly change is that feeding cookies to a parrot in real life is very dangerous, and they didn't want people killing off their real pet birds by accident. Fungus is your friend with this next trick you can play
play on your friends while they're away. Dig under their home, plant a bunch of mushrooms, and add a little bit of bone meal. The mushrooms will grow massive, going through your friend's house and deleting anything in its path. Give them a fungal infestation. This trick is sneaky. If your friend lives near a forest, slowly plant more and more trees closer and closer to their house. They'll think it's just a forest growing as it eventually surrounds their house. Keep planting trees in every block you find until they're in a thick, never-ending jungle. If you replace the leaves of a tree with some of your own you've snipped, those leaves will stay even if your friend breaks the wood blocks away, leaving these floating leaf islands that your friend will want to clean up to get them out of the way. Eating berries is a mistake! The bushes are decoration at best, and they're actually one of the worst food types in the game, filling you less than even raw beef. Your chest need protecting! Don't make the mistake of letting creepers destroy them! To be totally sure they're safe, waterlog the chest. The water will protect it, and the creeper would have exploded for nothing! It's always a mistake to come unprepared, especially in the ancient city. Bring slow fall potions because you can jump through the city from any height, and if you stay in a straight line, you won't trigger the sensors! In creative mode, people always make the mistake of not using all 10 of their hotbars. That's right, 10! In creative mode, you can save your hotbar to a number. Save your hotbar using the C key and the number you want it saved to. Press X and that same number to access that hotbar in an instant. If you want something even less suspicious, try breaking a hole beneath a lava pool and placing some water like this, and building your base down here. Lava pools are totally natural and nobody ever touches them on a server, making them the perfect place to slip into, even if it is a little painful. The only other place in the entire game that mobs can't spawn is actually an ocean temple? It's true! The game is coded so that only guardians can spawn in them, meaning that if you remove all the water, absolutely no mobs will spawn nearby. You're gonna need a lot of sponges or a massive machine, but at the end you're left with a pre-built mob-free paradise! But if you'd rather not do all that work, there are ways to completely mob-proof your base easily. Not only do slabs basically double the amount of blocks you have for floors and roofs, but mobs can't spawn on bottom slabs, meaning even if your house is pitch black, nothing will be able to spawn inside. You could even add soul sand below and use soul speed to run around your house super quickly. It's a fact that golems are the villager's loyal protector, but it's actually possible to witness a golem go on a rampage. Villagers celebrate by launching fireworks, but if they're not safe and a golem gets hit by a firework, it will see the villagers as enemies and wipe them all out. Did you know that if you enchant a trident with loyalty, it will follow you around until it gets into your inventory? Well, what happens when your inventory is full? It actually follows you around like a pet bird. A fact that's obvious, but most people never notice is that endstone is actually an inversion and recolor of cobblestone. It's honestly poetic, where the stone at the end is no different to the stone at the beginning. If they have an auto smelter, a simple yet wicked trick is a little sabotage. Clog up the works by putting dirt in the furnaces. They can't smelt it, so they'll be stuck here until your friend cleans them out by hand. String trip wire can block bamboo and sugar cane from growing, and is invisible! Use it in this wicked trick. Put it on your friend's farms and see how long it takes them to notice that bamboo just isn't growing at all. An even better trick to play on AFK friends is to build a whole portal around them. It'll send them to the nether, and once you break the portals on either side, they'll be crying out, wondering how they even got here. Did your friend live near a village? Play a fun little trick by putting name tags on all the villagers. Name them with taunts and jokes about your friend, and watch them wonder why all the villagers are so mean. Want to trick your friend who just got a brand new set of netherite tools? Enchanted stone tools look a lot like the netherite set, so why not get some efficiency one stone equipment and swap them over? They won't need the netherite ones, right? Weeping vines can be a lifesaver, so don't make the mistake of forgetting to bring some to the nether. You can't use water there, so to get down from a high place, put a weeping vine up, use bone meal, and it will grow as a perfect ladder down to safety. Needing to know where one biome begins and another ends can be so important. Don't make it hard to see the line between them. Turn off the biome blend option. The hard line between biomes might look weird, but it's so useful. It's worth it. When trapping villagers or animals, the biggest mistake is not using honey. Put it under their feet so they can't jump out of their pen. You'll never have trouble with escaped villagers again. Get that efficiency enchantment on your shovel, but don't make the mistake of going past efficiency 4. It actually can't get faster, so you're wasting your time and experience.